Action. About, um, we all discussed our conflicts that we were having and we talked about them and stuff. Just write that down. 200 words is not much. Write a story. Just about how you solved it. Um, and we are going to think about it and make it something worthwhile if you can. I know some people are great at people solving and don't have any strengths, but yes, it's great. It's just the same problem that we have to use for all the assignments. We are going to try and follow one conflict through all of the assignments in the whole class and look at them from different angles. So we are hoping, if you pick a reason, be like, if it's a conflict over what to have for breakfast or something, it might, might not work. Because you want something that we can track over the time throughout the course. No, so <laughs> that's what we want to do. Is this one assignment, <coughs> as we talk about? Yes, because this, this assignment is right down your conflict. The next assignment is look at your conflict in the light of what we talked about in class yeah. and see whether you did it right or wrong, or how you can. And so we comment on this conflict over several assignments throughout the rest of the course. Okay, now last week you gave a definition of conflict. Can anyone remember anything about what it was? Oh, very good. Congratulations, someone actually brought their notes from last time. So the key words are opinions and purposes, frustrating goals and desires. And we had a little pretend conflict in our last class, and we had different people with different opinions and different goals. Can you remember what that conflict was about? Drums. Drums. It was drums. about drums. So what was one side's opinion? Electric. Was... The electric drums, Yes, right? that's right. And what was Christy's opinion? She didn't they like electric drums. She didn't like electric sense. drums. Yeah. And Rachel's opinion was? My husband's opinion. They were too noisy. <laughs> Rachel's <laughs> opinion was we should have electric drums. Oh. Those were the two opinions. What was the underlying motivation behind Christy's they don't sound good? They don't. Something about the atmosphere. They help create some of the atmosphere. Was that one of them? Or they sound better? They just sound better. <laughs> now, when I said, why do you want to sound better? And you said, oh, excellence on his God. Right. That was your motivating, oh, yeah. underlying motivation. So we were looking past the superficial opinion to our underlying motivation. And Rachel wants electric drums, not because of how they sounded, but because... Of how you control them. And because you control the volume. But why do you want to control the volume? Old people have bad ears. Because people leave church if they're too loud. So the motivating goal for, having, for not having electric drums was excellence in church, honouring God. Now, the goal that we were working towards was keeping people in church, right? And so those were our two goals that were under undercurrents behind our two opinions. Now, what happened when I solved both of those goals at the same time? We didn't like your solution. You didn't like my solution. What does that tell you? <laughs> that they're stubborn. Nothing. It tells you that we hadn't found the real goal. If that was really your goal, you would have liked the solution. So that was not really your goal. What was the solution? The solution was play a CD. Yeah, no, but perfect it's sound. Play a CD. It's perfect sound and it's volume control. It solved both of your goals. But then it doesn't bring atmosphere. Okay, so now what I've said, now what I've done is I'm now I'm pushing harder to find what's your real goal? Your real goal is not excellence that honors God, because when I solved that problem, you didn't like it. Well atmosphere brings Okay, so now now what you're coming up with is a different goal. So what we're doing is we're mining deeper and deeper to find out what's the real thing that's driving the conflict. Um, and what we're going to find is there's multiple things that are going on at the same time. Um, and what I'm going to say, just for fun, just to be a real stirrer, the big problem in this argument is peer pressure. Because I can guarantee if Hillsong had electric drums at the next conference, half the churches in Perth would do it within one year. That is so true. That is true. <laughs> because it's not about the sound, no, it's about the peer pressure. Coming. That's the thing that's driving a whole lot of what we do. Hey, but we don't want to say that, and I'm going to move on right now. Before I <laughs> Start, on. Start behind church but I, I, I just say this because I had the thought one day, why don't we? Why do we have a band? This is just totally the way. Why do we have a band? We spend hours of time, thousands of dollars, doing all this hard, hard work when we could play a CD, and all these people could go out evangelising and pastoral caring with the same amount of energy, and we would have much more resources in the church. Why do we do it? And, and then the point is, I don't want you to answer the question, the rhetorical question, but getting back to the real why, what is the real why that's actually motivating the argument? Because we are, spend so much time putting out the fire on top and we haven't found the real thing that's going on underneath. And that's the one that I want to really push that, because if you want to do conflict and address things and fix things and bring peace, 
you have to actually get to the root problem. And it's going to be two or three levels down. Because, um, no, I'm going to stop right now because we can just keep going <laughs> on that subject. Very cool. Okay. Today we're talking about levels. Keep going. Of, I'm going to use it as my assignment. I know. So you can use this as your essay question if you like. And we can talk about it as long as you like. But um, we want to stay on the class subject. We're talking about levels of conflict. We've got some different levels of conflict. I want you to think about a conflict right now. And the conflict we're going to think about is two housemates choosing a pet. <laughs> okay. So who wants to volunteer to be housemate number one? Cat. Sure. <laughs> okay, Jason. And Jason is housemate number two. That one, mate. What sort of pet do you want, Sean? I would like a husky. And what do you want, Jason? Chicken. A chihuahua. A chihuahua. Are <laughs> oh, oh, oh. they both dogs? No. Oh, yeah. A big dog and a little dog, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we have a conflict in our housemates. Two different pets. One wants a big dog, one wants a little dog. Okay, how deep does this conflict go? Very. <laughs> okay. Uh, the surface level is just a difference. Um, it's going to hit level five. I'm we know he wants a big dog and he wants a little dog. Why does he want a big dog? They're more fun to play with, and they're also great at protecting. Why do you want a little dog? Because yeah. <laughs> they're cute. Coochie. Yeah. The because they're pretty good. No. They cost okay, less to okay, feed. Fits in Jason's man bag. Oh, <laughs> 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 you have a man bag? Yeah, Poor Jason's and, uh, getting it from both They're cute, and they're like a baby. <laughs> they're <laughs> like a baby? Oh, it's gone. That's what happens when you get married. No. <laughs> Sean, do you really care that he wants a little dog? Yeah, because I'll squish it. Okay, if By this accident. was a superficial difference of opinion, you wouldn't really care. You'd go, yeah, I know he wants a little dog. Yeah, I know you want a big dog, and no one really cares. And probably you'll need, you won't get either pet, and you won't care. Um, that's a superficial difference, level one conflict, no one really cares. But the, the point is that Jason understands why he wants a big dog. He's a young fella, he wants some rough and tumble. Right? He wants to have something to go running with. So or Jason's with. not young. No, no. Jason's a more reflective type. Yeah. He's built, working on bonding and emotional attachment, and he wants the little cute baby dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Le a level two conflict. <laughs> right. It gets a bit more hard when Jason doesn't understand what is going on in Sean's head. That's a level two conflict. I don't actually understand. Um, why you do that? I just don't get it. I just you, want a big dog. You've heard that. I just don't get it. Why on earth? And we're talking about we're talking about drums in church. I just don't get why that guy keeps going about drums. Seriously, we talked about it so many times, and I just don't get it. That's a different level of conflict because there's no understanding between each other. Can I just ask a question though? Why can't you just tell the person just to get over it? Like well, it depends what the conflict is, right? right? Like for the drums, this is the way we're going to do it. We're going to have real drums. If you don't like it, you can leave and find a church that has electric drums. But, but this is the culture of our church, and you can like it or lump it. Well, you, well, you can if you like, if you want to. No, no, and I'm not being trying to be serious, like yeah. silly by yes. that comment. I'm just. And, yes, okay. Why can't you just tell people to get over it? Yeah, just like because you have your dog here, have your dog have a half middle down the line. Have half a dog each. Cut the dog in half. No, like have a line <laughs> down the middle of the house. Have a little dog each. Cut dog. Um, because have a medium sized dog each. Have an obese 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 dog each. Why can't we? Let's have a. Well, is there anyone want to say? We'll just stay with the original. I love her doodle. Why can't we just have one person's side of the argument and tell the other person to get over it? Because it's rude. When is that okay and not okay? Yes. Well, then you're saying your side is right and their side is right. You're bad. saying your side is right, um, and you're saying their side is not right, mm. or you're saying, I don't care about what... You, the problem is, the people that are... Remember the opinions at the top? Saying, when you say we, do electric, we don't do electric drums full stop, what you're saying is, all of those people don't matter to Jesus, because you don't want them in your church. That's how the person is going to take your comment about electric drums. Yeah. You no see, worries. because it's not about the drums, it's about all the people that don't want to come to church. <laughs> okay, so that's, this is how conflict, it's not just about the little thing on top. See, you're talking about, there's a difference of opinion when I actually think that, okay, when I did drums, you had two toms on top of the bass drum, right? And you had one tom on the ground, it's a better setup. Okay, but now, ever since about three years ago, they have two big toms on the ground and one little tom on the top. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Now, this is a difference of opinion. Seriously, 
if I was drumming, I'd be writing some when I'm coming, and then I'll come back. Okay? It doesn't, no one really cares. I don't really care. It's a difference of opinion. It's very superficial, right? And I understand why they do it, and you understand why I like it my way. No one really cares. We just cope with it. Level one, difference of opinion. A misunderstanding is if I thought that actually, um, I don't get why you do that and you're doing it wrong, that's when it goes deeper. And why I push hard on the, you don't love people if you don't want electric drums, because you don't know how deep the, the difference goes in the person. And if you write it off, then you don't know if you're pushing on a really hard difference and they don't even think you're Christian anymore. That's why you just have to be careful and you can't just, but you'll notice we don't have electric drums, so we've already decided. This is just a hypothetical, hypothetical argument to make a point. With the dogs, if I don't understand why you want a big dog or a little dog, I'm going to be abrasive about it, and I'm going to be um, hostile about it, and critical of, about it, and that's going to bring some offence to people. I don't understand why that's a real dog. Yes, I know. It's hard for him to justify it. Hey, because get married and have a kid, and that will solve the problem. Oh my gosh, you just took the okay. debate to a new <laughs> level. Dog's cheaper. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Even though yeah. you don't understand, you can still live in the same house, right? They all have like immunizations, you have teeth. Some people close their dogs. No, I understand dogs Joseph, are the yeah. Yeah. You're like trained to be a teacher, right? Yeah, well. yeah. Um, you've actually gra graduated now, you're a teacher, and you actually own the place. He's just living there. Um, on a very subsidised rent because he's a student. I would not live so there. Jason owns the house and he's bought a little dog and there's no big dogs allowed. Okay? Um, Go, Jason. Because it's his house, right? <laughs> and Sean still lives in the house and he just puts up with it and it's no big deal really, but whatever, when I get my own house, I'm going to get a big dog. But right? that's okay. Every time he walks past, it kicks me. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. A level three disagreement would be when every time he walks past, he kicks it. <laughs> Right, okay. So actually, that's really nasty if you're not letting me have a dog. You're that dog and I'm that dog. That's not okay. I'm occasionally going to do something. Oh, you've run out of dog food? Get it yourself. I am at the shops, but no. Oh, I'm at signal. I can't get you any dog food. All right, all right. Stop putting this leg Okay. <laughs> so you see the honey loop is getting a bit deeper, right? Because Sean, Sean, Sean. I'm... All right, I mean, I kicked it once. <laughs> Stop swinging on your chair. Yeah. Now, I want you to pause for a minute. How many of you can remember the conflict you talked about last time? Last week's conflict. Who can remember what they talked about last time? Come on, think. I want you to bring back last week's conflict. Your assignment conflict, something. And then, uh, you're right, come on, let me see some realisation. One the one we talked about last week, that you were in your little groups, so that you're going to use for your assignment. Your conflict oh, is going to be your case study from the whole course. Can you relay? <laughs> Yep. Yes, okay. Well, I want you to think about, on the scale of one to five, we're only up to three, where do you think it's at? Is it a one, a two, or three? We'll do four and five, we'll talk about it in our groups, we'll just remind people what our conflict was, and where we think it is on the level of one to five. Number four, um, this is where they stop talking to each other in the house. Okay, because of this stupid dog thing. Um, now, I'm not going to talk to you... <coughs> Even we don't now suddenly we don't watch this. We don't. I won't watch TV. When I'm going to sit in the same room as you and watch TV because whatever program you've got on, I don't like because you don't. And we've forgotten what it's about now. It started off being about the dog, but now everything. When you're, if you're cooking dinner, I'm going out because you know we're just like hostile. Well, um, Joseph's cooking today. Yeah, I know, but he got a little dog. Right? He put and a that's dog just food. so bad. Yeah, See, now, the conflict got so entrenched in the person's heart. They're not even there. You know? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, but I left the door open and the dog went outside and I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad. So, um, I left the door open. That's right. And he accidentally under his Have you done this before? Maybe. No. So wait, what's, as we go from one to five, the chance of yeah, reconciling is getting lower and lower. As the conflict gets more and more entrenched, the chance of actually rebuilding this friendship is. Um, getting worse and worse. So um, until at level five, they're so emotionally antagonistic with each other that they're not going to live the same house. They're going to move out, and if they see each other, they're going to cross roads and look on the other side of the street. Um, with their big dog and little dog. With their, with, that's right, and they'll get their big dog to chase a little dog. <laughs> and all that sort of they're stuff. Those are the levels of conflict come. like that we're getting to. Now I want you to think about in your groups, um, make sure there's not four people from the same group as last time. Got a quick summary. What was your conflict? What level do you think it's at? Okay, so we're going to turn four. 
Twos and fours, let's group here. Uh, a one, five, and a four. four. One, five, and four. Wow, this is really, isn't it? Fives and fours. They're very Come aggressive along. people. Yeah. Angry people. Twos, two twos, yeah. and two fives. Two twos and two fives. Come on. They've got yeah. issues too. Um, three, four, and a <laughs> five. Five, three, four, four. No, that'll be a Five, four, and three. all happening as well. These guys yeah. are the only people That's over five. here. Because hey. they've all got ones <laughs> and twos as a general <laughs> average. Yeah. As no, a no, general I average, ones and twos. Fours and fives. Two and four? Two and four? Okay. Think one. That okay. conflict okay. better not be about me, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lucky okay. one. Okay. Is it? Any observations about. What oh, keeps things at a low level? People at low level conflicts, what keeps it at a low level? <laughs> okay. What's that? Actually changing your viewpoint. So, Under, so negotiation skills and conflict management skills, you're able to keep things calm. Yeah, look at the root cause. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so what you're doing is doing some good peacemaking to stop it getting out of hand. What keeps something up at level five? What, how does it end up at level five? Oh, okay. People don't want to talk. People won't communicate. Yeah, very good. What else? Anything else? Way over emotionally. Yeah. Highly emotionally supercharged. They yeah. can't. Um, they don't rationalise properly. Yeah. So what? What do these people that are at level five? What are they? How are they responding to the conflict? I walked away. You walked away. Well done. You just take one of these. Congratulations. Yeah. What else happened? I attacked. <laughs> Attacked? What did you do? <laughs> what do you mean you attacked? I went straight to the, like, I went so and got the shoot straight out of them. So, okay. So you went after someone to find out to clarify the situation. Okay, you that's attacked. Yeah, that's an attack. Very good. So that's pretty cool. Not very good. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> there's, no, there's, there's a whole um, continuum of how you can respond to a conflict going from escape I'm just going to bail on this whole situation. I'm walking out. I'm moving out. Keep your dog. I'm going. Keep your right? dog. So, I say, excuse me, you've got no right to go to that dog without my permission. You're out, or the dog's out. Okay? Could you be both, though? Like, you've tried, you've been at a level five. You try to kind of <laughs> peace make, peace attack, and then you is where you try and fix it. Yeah. And if the sun's peaceful, that's probably oh, that's the normal. Peacemaking. That's mistake. your normal response. Most people try and fix it. Oh yeah. And that's what we try to do. If it doesn't work, yeah. it's either one of the other. If other you can, can you walk away, right? right? That's the um, general. The oh. gen I would say that's the general Christian thing to do. Wrong. So I pose the question. Yeah. <laughs> when is peacemaking wrong? When is peace? Great question. When is peacemaking a bad idea or wrong? When it's or illegal fencing. activity. What do you say? Fence or peacemaking is not fencing, I don't think. Hold on. I've got a. When when you're compromising <laughs> your own. Doing nothing? When you're giving something up that's wrong. Or doing doing nothing wrong. Depends, depends on the collateral damage. But doing nothing is more peacekeeping rather than peacemaking. That's right. Correct. Doing nothing, hitting the sand, ignoring. Escaping. Um, it's closer to escaping than actually, it's like. Doing nothing, yes. So I guess that's the situation, depending on the situation as well. Because sometimes so you, if you can't make peace, you yes. need to leave. Yes. Yeah. If you can't make peace, you need to leave. Yes. Or else what will happen? Attack. Well, then Lisa uh -huh. Rossi blows up. There'll be fight. There'll be chaos. That's right. Yeah. So, well, can peacemaking become bad when you, like, say, agree or do something that is illegal or wrong? Um, yes, that's a great example. Just so that there's not a fight, I'll go with you and we'll both rob the bank together. Mm. Or I'll so that there's not a, yeah. There, right. There's an no, obvious time, I'm going to go along with something that's wrong, just because I don't want to fight, obviously, that's not okay, yes. So just um, you know, the homosexual marriage thing, yes. thing, so if there is something about that, do you attack or do you keep peace and make people think that you are agreeance with, that? how would you, you let an escape? Or if you escape. escape, then you're making people think, yeah. You, who, who, who is you? Who, me personally, you're saying? A Christian? The church? Oh, sorry, so, yeah, a Christian. So if a... Okay, uh, what I'll do is I'll give you the... Very quickly. Attack would be writing to the newspaper, explaining why, what the Christian point of view is and why it should be not allowed. That's attacking. Okay? 
Um, that's a, 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 maybe it's a valid. And also, protesting and firebombing the gay rights headquarters is also attacking. But there's a, there's a valid attack and a non valid attack. Escaping, moving to another country, or just pretending it's not on, or going somewhere where you're not a citizen so you don't get to vote, or. Uh, uh, no, 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 not doing anything about it, yes. Peacemaking would be. We'll talk about peacemaking now. Let's go to our peacemaking. It's all like war break in. Where is that? Is that like after the attack's gone wrong? Or? War is attack. Okay, so here's. I'll be having this diagram in your notes. Peacemaking. Um, Extreme escape is walking away, um, pretending there's no thing, or um, committing suicide is, I guess, is the ultimate form of escape, which is not recommended. Um, at the other end of the extreme, killing someone is the ultimate way of ending a conflict, and this has become, um, especially in some countries, but even in Australia, if the conflict gets too bad, we will do that. Um, we see that sometimes the number of murders, for example, that are um, Domestic disputes that have just gone out of control, right? That's where they, most of them come from. The number of suicides, murder suicides, that are domestic disputes, right? It's people in a conflict and they don't know how to figure it out and it just goes on and on until they escape or they attack. Does that say litigation after assault? Yes, it does. It says um, litigation. But well, that's when you're taking someone to court to win, to prove your point. Has anyone done that? Done, done that form of conflict management, taking someone to court? Just like taking to your principal's house? Taking to your principal, depends what you do. I, I know, I had a conflict with a former guy that I worked for um, about who whether I should have been paid a certain amount of money or not, and I ended up taking him to court because he yeah, got my money. He had no right at all to not pay me. Um, but He was doing the wrong thing. He, he was doing the wrong yeah. thing, and yeah, he was hoping that I would flight for it. Um, Denial. Yeah. I first, I tried the whole, come on, be reasonable. And explain the situation and blah blah. And when there was no progress, I'm like, well, I'll give you go, go to court, see what they say. And of course, before we got that far, he just yeah, okay, pay me. Yes. Where does intimidation come in that scale? Intimidation is definitely an attack. Okay. Um, yeah. It's probably not necessarily a Jesus way of solving a conflict, but um, intimidation. You're uh, you're making the person choose your way, not through reason or consensus, but through like bullying. Up, so so yeah. it becomes a poor assault. Yes, that's exactly right. So you've got all the way from pretending it's not there, trying to work things out. Anyone explain the difference between negotiation and mediation? Mediation, you have someone else that's there. Mediation, you have a third party who comes in, and what does the third party do? Makes the decision. No, they do not. They mediate between you. Like in a divorce, you have that. A mediator person, comes man. in and says, you talk, you talk. Yeah, are you listening? Man. Are you listening? What are you saying? You say it again. Say it again. They don't actually do anything except facilitate a conversation. The next one up after that is an arbitration where the third party, everyone says their thing, it's like going to court, and the arbitrator says, well, I'm choosing that, or I'm saying this, or I'm so making a decision, and you've got to go with it. So those are the, those are the different peacemaking things where rather than <coughs> trying to reconcile, fix the conflict somehow. Those are the things, the options that are available to us. And in our last 30 seconds, we've already talked about it. So some people have, have blighted, some people have fighted. A success, can anyone tell me a successful peacemaking story where we have done a reconciliation or a negotiation or a mediation or an arbitration or something that has actually resolved the conflict? Yes, go, oh, Jason. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, can you share? Yeah. The one problem, of course, in this class, especially the level three, four, five conflicts, they probably have some personal private elements, so there's no requirement to actually share any details or share anything, because I know some of my level five conflicts are totally off the record and not appropriate to be discussed and stuff like that. Yes, go. Okay, um, so it was it to do with youth? So it's to do with um, youth, and one of the youth um, they were, I guess, compulsive lying. So it got to the point where I couldn't really trust what they were saying. And I'd, I'd talk to them about it and ask them what's going on. And it's still like, I don't know if I can trust you. Because that trust is gone. Um, but I ended up speaking to his mum, which gave a lot of insight. And I guess I could understand from where he was coming from and the behaviour that was happening because of situations which he had been um, going through. And um, yeah, so yeah. that was peacemaking, I think. Yes, so 
Like, what was the result? How did you resolve the conflict? Mediation. Uh, mediation. Mediation, yes. Yes, very good. Yeah. Very good. So there was mediation. And you notice that wonderful word that got spoken. He said, after talking to the mum, I can understand. Mm. So what he did was he managed to get it up from level two to level one. Sure, the kid might still be lying, but now I understand. So I've got more tolerance and more space for it, and I work with it more, because now I understand. So the mediation response. Um, a third party is another way to, this time off topic, out of time, another reason way to keep things, conflicts down, is where there's a common authority figure. Now, if there's a common authority figure, at the end of the day, what they say goes, and, you're, and that's just how it is, and that can solve a lot of problems. Where there's no, like when there's a police force and there's a court system, at the end of the day, a lot of things that could escalate into warfare don't because this is the deal, this is the decision, that's it. And that's a great way that peace is maintained in a civilised society and structure like there's pastors, there's school principals that solve disputes and that's how it ends where it ends. And you either leave the school or you accept their decision. Yes, yeah, Sean, last comment. Is bribery come under peacemaking? Bribery. <laughs> <laughs> no, honest, honest question. That's a scripture, that there's a scripture that says, right? What's the language? The scripture that says, the bribe is a charm. Okay. And Whoever, if the one who uses it, everywhere he goes, he succeeds. Um, that's an interesting, we'll come back to Old Testament to talk about that one, but is bri bribery is definitely a peacemaking tool. Is it a godly peacemaking tool? I'm not going to say yes it is. Um, no, of course it's not. But it's definitely a peacemaking tool. I'll get what I want. Polit the world of politics, remember, is all about, I'll give you something if you give me something, and negotiations and trade-offs and stuff. Well, to maintain I mean, like, so if you like, gave something to someone to get them off your back in a way, something they wanted, and you got what you want in the process. Is that really a bad thing? Well, that might not be bribery. Bribery is normally, I'll give you something in secret, so that you will do something that otherwise you wouldn't do, and it wouldn't be seen as the right thing to do, I guess. So normally, to pervert justice, or to um, pervert like honesty and stuff like that. Now, um, trading and negotiating is totally different. I'll, I'll let you have a, a big dog if, you, if, you, if it stays outside. Okay, there you go. That's that's a, that's a trading negotiating thing. That um, it's different to saying no, you can't have the dog. Little dog should learn to live in Okay, it is three minutes past nine.